Hey, it's the LZK Wolf. Um, I know it's been a long time since I made a video, and I'll probably make another video addressing that. But for now, I've been playing New World for a while, and I just kind of want to get some of my thoughts out on the game. So, first off, let me just say right off the bat, I do think New World is a good game. I have just about 200 hours of game time, and I have been enjoying the experience for the most part. My issue, I think, is that the current game design seems to be working against itself, at least in the areas that I find most enjoyable. Um, so first let's talk about what things I have been enjoying in the game. Exploration. Exploration is great. The open world of New World is beautiful. I love traveling through the various biomes, gathering supplies and resources, looting supply crates along the way, and so on. And I mean the gathering. I don't know what it is, but the game just makes gathering super fun. I'm not sure if it's the semi-realistic placement of the gathering nodes, um, the way you can see that cluster of iron ore hidden in the brush, or the silhouette of a buffalo grazing along the horizon, but gathering just feels so natural, and it's just so seamlessly integrated into the game that you can't help but feel compelled to engage in it. Also, the combat. I really enjoy the combat. I like how easy it is to just pick up a new weapon and try it out. I mean, um, getting all the passive skills for a particular build may be a fairly long time investment, but it really doesn't take long at all to unlock the primary skills, the primary active skills for any weapon, which lets you get the gist of what using that weapon is going to be like without having to overcommit to it. Uh, also, it's super cheap and easy, I mean, actually completely free during the early levels to respec and tie out different builds, um, just respec and rebuild it to your heart's content. I know there are there may be various opinions on this, but for me, the limited number of active skills, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's uh, three skills per weapon. You have two weapons, so that's six skills altogether. That limited number of skills combined with the skill-based targeting, which uh, focuses more on positioning, movement, and skill execution, it just feels intuitive and rewarding. Um, I also like that combat skills usually lock you into an attack animation, so you can't be running around and moving while you're attacking. You have to really, um, have your, your, your movement is limited when you attack, which forces you to think about and commit to the timing of your skills. Um, it all just comes together in a very, I gotta say Dark Souls type of way, but it doesn't have that same sort of uh, dark fantasy, hard difficulty of Dark Souls, but it, the combat feels somewhat similar, especially with the, uh, the dodge rolls and things. And finally, let's talk about PvP. So, I like open world PvP in games generally. Um, I've enjoyed it in other games like uh, Albion Online, and uh, I've also liked the um, Realm vs. Realm and Guild Wars 2, etc. And I like the general idea of how PvP is designed in New World as well. Um, having a PvP that actually brings about real change in the world through things like capturing territories, managing towns, and so forth, it's a really cool idea. Especially the ability for towns to be upgraded and improved by the guilds running them. I love how, I, playing New World, I've been seeing that the, the towns just, they get a little bit, um, the town itself stays the same, but the individual um, crafting stations, they generally upgrade and become more extravagant over time and just seeing that improvement over time is really interesting and that in turn can drive travel either to or away from certain cities based on what services are available or not available. The whole idea sounds really great but as you probably figured out it's now time for the bad and since I ended with a somewhat reserved praise of the PvP system I'll start off with my criticisms in that area. Um, the PvP system doesn't feel like it's been properly integrated into the game PvP, it feels like just a switch, and as a low-level player, there is little to no incentive to turn on your PvP flag while you're out trying to level up. Sure, you can get a bit of an XP bonus by having the PvP flag enabled, but how much of a bonus is enough to outweigh the risks of being ganked by a high-level enemy party and being forced to respawn back at town over and over again? I mean, it could be argued, and I kind of feel that the time saved by not worrying about other players more than makes up for any XP bonus that you get by having a PvP flag enabled. And this is made worse by the fact that an enemy faction can enter your faction's town, flag up inside it, and then come out to meet you right in front of the gates. I mean, they could even teleport into your town 
and then faction flag, and then <laughs> attack you in front of your town. This for me is rather complexing and doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I feel like I should have some degree of safety flagging up in my own faction city. Enemies should definitely still be able to assault the gates, I love that kind of mechanic. But they should have to earn their way through the surrounding territory first. So like if they just made it so that you could only flag up from your own faction city or camp, then there would be a natural balance where PvPers would understand that the level of risk increases the further from their own territory they venture. Um, high level parties could still come in and camp the gates as it were, but they would likely be spotted on the way and opposing parties could form to challenge them. From a gameplay perspective, I just feel like this would allow players to engage in PvP at the level of risk they choose, rather than being at a more or less equal risk at all times. As it is right now, since the risk is equal no matter what, I think low level players tend to just opt out of PvP entirely, waiting to get to their higher levels so that they can feel like they're more um, competitive. Um, and sadly, I bet a large number of those players never actually get there, because there is a thing that people are calling level 30 burnout, which tends to drain away people's desire to keep playing past level 30. And then we have the wars. So the wars look like they could be a lot of fun. But since they have a limited number of spots to fill, and there's no level cap regardless of the level of the territory you're defending, it essentially becomes end game content. When the game first came out, only the people who had grinded enough to get to their mid 40s or early 50s were included in the roster of the wars. And soon people started reaching max level and it became only the max level 60s who were invited on. Now even a level 60 might not even get in if they don't have a high enough gear score. So yeah, Wars could be fun, but only for the best players on the server, and once again this is eliminating any motivation for low level players to engage in PvP. So if you're looking for PvP content in this game, you're most likely going to need to work your way up to the max level. And on your way to that level 60, you're going to have to get through the level 30 to 40 grind burnout stage that a lot of players end up quitting the game. So. There's maybe a lot of people who are going to want to play PvP, be forced into PvE, and then quit before they get to the point where they can play competitively. Okay, so that's enough about PvP. I got over that myself, and I just decided to put PvP aside for the time being and focus more on the PvE elements I like. And, you know, all the stuff that I mentioned earlier, gathering, exploration, and so forth. But where things start going downhill for me is with the quests. See, I go to the town's board stop by the faction NPC, you know, all the stuff that make up the key mechanics placed in the game in order to send you through the key game loop, essentially what the designers of the game want you to be doing. And within a few hours, I start feeling it. You know, that creeping boredom that just kind of looms over your head when you realize that you aren't really engaged in what you're doing anymore. The curiosity that pushed you over the cliff just to see what was on the other side is kind of being left to be replaced with a laundry list of chores you just gotta get done. I understand that some players enjoy these types of quest systems, but I just feel like they are all a bit outdated in my opinion. And as a game mechanic, it just actively discourages free exploration. You know, the type of exploration that I love. If I see a location on the map I haven't been to before, my natural inclination is to go and explore that location. But with these types of, of quest systems, I realize that I won't get any credit for anything I do in that area if I don't have the associated quest. And even if I do explore it now, in all likelihood, an NPC is going to send me there on a quest later, so to avoid having to clear out the same area twice, I might as well just wait until I get a quest. So now when I see that unexplored area of the map, I don't really think about going there anymore. My initial response to this was to just take as many quests as possible. Any, any NPC I saw with a quest, I took all of it. So I could just fill the map up with as many markers as possible, and now I could treat it not as a laundry list, but I could just go explore in any random direction, and if I happen to find a quest marker nearby, you know, I'll go into that area, give it a peek, and see if I can't bang out a few quests. And this worked for a time, but then I realized that the town's board quests seemed to be repeating. You know, see, I somewhat naively thought I could use the quest as a way to keep track of what areas I had explored and which areas I still needed to do, but now that I realize that the quest seemed to be repeating, or at least sending me to the same location, I'm not quite sure if that's possible. 
So as it is, it's really hard to feel any sense of progression because you can't tell the difference between areas you've explored and areas you haven't. So for example, in ESO, you have map markers that filled up when you completed that area. So you can see if you still had stuff to do in that area or not. Um, Guild Wars 2 had heart quests or points of interest and so on. But New World just has a question mark if you have never been there at all. And if you walk by it, boom, it's on your map. Done. Nothing more. So you have no really to know you have no way to know if that's the place you just walked by or is that a place you actually actively explored. And then the quests themselves, like everything just blends together and you're left not really sure if you are enjoying the content or you're just pushing through to level up. And I'm guessing this is probably what people are referring to as the level 30 burnout. Um, in the first 20 levels or so, everything seems new and exciting, but around level 30 you start realizing that the content is more or less repeated. I think if New World had a quest system, something more like uh, Guild War 2's uh, Heart Quests, I wouldn't really have as many complaints. See, for those of you who don't know, Heart Quests were quests scattered across the open world with no requirements to talk to an NPC in town or progress through a chain of quests, etc. Nothing needed to unlock the quests. By entering the area of the quest, it was automatically unlocked and you're already engaged in completing it. And you can even complete it right there without having to go back to town to hand it in or anything like that. So that right there gets rid of a lot of the travel time just going to and from towns, um, which is a plus, but also it allows you to explore without having to question whether you need to get a quest associated with that area first. And also, another thing, um, the heart quest generally had a completion bar rather than a number, and they had multiple ways to fill it up. So this helps get rid of that situation, you know, the thing that I encounter a lot in New World where um, you know, you're on a quest with just one more chest you have to find, but you have no idea where it is, so you spend 20 minutes just retreading and retreading the mobs you already cleared, just searching for how you missed it. Um, it gets rid of that because if you can't find that one chest, you can just do something else to fill up the rest of the bar and you can clear the quest and move on. But that's sort of like a bonus. I think the most important thing for me is the ability for these types of systems to get rid of that feeling of, I found a new place on the map, but I'm not sure if I want to explore it or not. With this type of system, you have the assurance that if there is a quest in that area, you can engage in it right there and right now. Plus, in this system, you can see what areas you have explored and what areas you still need to explore just by opening your map, which gives you a sense of progression. So, as for New World's uh, Towns board, I think the gathering, crafting, and hunting quests, etc. can stay as they are, but exploration really should be reworked. So anyway, where am I now? I still enjoy New World quite a bit. Um, I've dredged through the 30 to 40 uh, burnout, and I've definitely felt it, but I feel like I've been able to get through it for the most part, um, leaning quite heavily into the gathering and crafting aspects of the game. That's where I've gotten the largest chunks of my XP. But I can't help but feel like the overall PvP system is a bit half-baked. And the exploration side of the gameplay, something that I totally fell in love with during the open betas, probably because I wasn't worried about leveling and just ignored the in-game quest entirely, just isn't living up to my expectations. But at any rate, I just wanted to get some of my thoughts out there. Let me know if you agree, disagree, or have any other thoughts to add. And until next time, live boldly and be creative.